Hello and welcome to the program Energy and You, a show on weekly developments within the energy sector, focusing on the activities of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company, NNPC Limited. Tonight, Nigeria's oil production hits 1.67 million barrels per day. The increase is attributable to the continued efforts of security forces in the oil regions. We have an update. And discussions on future prospects and innovative solutions to increased investments take center stage as NNPC Limited and Total Energies strengthen their partnership. Plus, NNPC Foundation Limited holds its maiden outreach with the NYC, focusing on financial training initiatives. All of these and more on the show today. Stay with us. Let's kick off with top global energy stories making the rounds this week. Oil prices were stable at the start of the week, amid expectations that major producers would keep supplies tight, as hopes grew for the Federal Reserve to leave interest rates unchanged to avoid dampening the U.S. economy. Brent crude futures for November traded down $0.03 cents at $88.52 a barrel. West Texas Intermediate Crude October futures were unchanged at $85.55 a barrel. Both contracts ended last week at their highest in more than half a year after two previous weeks of losses. Crude oil prices have been primarily driven by the anticipation of additional supply cuts from major oil producing nations Russia and Saudi Arabia. That's according to Suganda Sajiva, Executive Vice President and Chief Strategist at Acme Investment Advisors. Mediation talks to avert strikes at U.S. Chevron's two major liquefied natural gas facilities in Australia began on Monday after workers rejected the company's offer on wages and working conditions last week. The company bypassed unions and pulled its offer directly to workers, who overwhelmingly rejected. The industrial action will begin on Thursday if parties cannot find a resolution. The strike will occur at Chevron's Gorgon and Wheatstone projects, which account for more than 5% of global LNG production capacity. On the other hand, global crude oil supplies are expected to improve in the next six to eight weeks because of refinery maintenance, although SAR crude will stay tight. Russell Hardy, chief executive of the world's largest independent oil trader, Vitol, said SAR crude economics will remain stronger than sweets because of the OPEC plus cuts. You are watching Energy and You. The Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy recently held a press briefing at the Ministry's headquarters in Abuja with various stakeholders and relevant representatives from ministries, departments and agencies, including NNPC Limited. The aim was to provide updates on Nigeria's economic performance, implementation of fiscal policies and reforms, as well as collaboration with relevant stakeholders to address economic challenges. It was also to discuss ongoing efforts to address fiscal challenges, curb corruption and promote transparency, future economic projections and, of course, opportunities. Which, by the time it grew... The Minister of Finance, Mr. Wale Edu, highlighted the resilience of Nigeria's economy amidst global uncertainties, acknowledging the challenges faced with inflationary pressures and foreign exchange concerns, while emphasizing the government's commitment to implementing fiscal policies aimed at restoring macroeconomic stability and driving sustainable growth. Automation, digitization are key initiatives which the government will pursue, which will bring greater efficiency to the way they collect funds and account for them and also the way funds are spent. And one particular area in which automation, digitization, technology is critical is what is called the national single window. It's an e-government community that covers so many areas, trade facilitation, 
and various ministries and so on and so forth. And that is, is, is a, an initiative which by the time it grows to cover most of government activity will take us on to another level in, in terms of efficiency and blocking of leakages. The chairman of the Presidential Committee on Fiscal Policy and Tax Reforms, Mr. Taiwo Oyedele, shared insights on the committee's efforts to facilitate economic growth and inclusive development. We think that what is more pressing and even more important than giving incentives is removing disincentives. And the good thing about removing disincentives is it doesn't cost government money, right? And then it stimulates the economy and it helps us to create wealth and growth that is inclusive. While speaking at the event, the Group Chief Executive Officer of the NMPC Limited, Mele Kiari, revealed that strategic interventions from various agencies have helped to restore sanity in the fight against crude oil theft and brought about fiscal stability in the oil and gas industry to attract investment into the sector. The oil and gas industry has a huge potential and possibilities of providing all the FX requirements of this country. But you can't do this except you're able to produce and also take it to the market. Of course, we did have substantial challenges of security, which I also confirm this moment that Mr. President has re-engineered the security approach and we're already seeing uh, very significant changes in our production environment. And may I also use this opportunity to also say that I was just checking the data, actual data for crude oil and condensate production is at 1.67 million barrels per day. This is substantial if you look at the situation where we are almost going below a million barrels about a year and some months ago. And this is quite substantial. The press briefing provided stakeholders with an update on Nigeria's economic performance, ongoing reforms, and outlined future opportunities for economic growth as well as the importance of collaboration and transparency in achieving sustainable development goals. Remarkable progress is being made as the fight against crude oil theft intensifies. Let's update you on the recent gains achieved in the last week. Across the Niger Delta, the war on crude oil theft is on and the industry-wide security collaboration continues to record remarkable progress. Between the 26th and 1st of September 2023, a total of 150 incidents were recorded in Rivers, Bielsa, Emo and Delta states. In the past week, 51 illegal refineries were uncovered and destroyed. In Degama River state and Otwasega in Bielsa state, several illegal refining businesses were brought to a halt. Deep in the creeks of Sokebolu in Yokri Delta State, an oven is being destroyed. In Imiringi and Ogbia in Bayelsa State, including Degema in River State, illegal refining businesses were shut down. In Akukutoru and Obele in River State and Ogba Egbema in River State, large storage pits for stolen crude were uncovered. Stolen crude in sacks were also discovered across several locations. This aerial shot gives a clear view of the damage caused by these illegal refineries and oil storage facilities. In Yenogwa in Bielsa State, a facility being used for oil theft related activities was uncovered as well. In Ogbia Egbema River State and Omoko in River State, Tabraz and Olodiama in Bielsa State, 22 illegal connections were discovered across the Niger Delta in the past week. Mostly buried underground, those close to the surface had valves fixed to ease control. Here, 
it's a wasted abundance of crude oil from this illegally connected pipeline. On water, nine cases of vessel AIS infractions were recorded, while on land, 16 vehicles conveying stolen crude were arrested in Iya, Ebocha, Alese in Rivers, and Ohaji, Egbema in Imo State. 37 wooden boats conveying volumes of stolen crude were arrested in Degema and inside the creeks of Sokebolu in Yokri Delta State, while three cases of oil spills were recorded in River State. Nine of these incidents were recorded in the deep blue water. 24 of these incidents were recorded in the western region of the Niger Delta. 50 were recorded in the central region, while 67 took place in the eastern part of the Niger Delta's oil-producing region. For NNPC Limited, there is no backing down on the war on crude oil theft until the menace is eradicated for good. In continued efforts to promote partnerships and provide enabling investment framework and thriving business opportunities in the Nigerian energy sector, NNPC Limited recently played host to the new Managing Director and Country Chair of Total Energies Nigeria, Mr. Matthew Boye. The meeting with NNPC Limited's Group CEO, Mr. Melekiari, aims to foster collaboration and good working relationship between both companies. Led by its new managing director, Mr. Matthew Boyer, the visit to NMPC Limited's corporate headquarters served as an opportunity to familiarize and explore areas of innovative collaborations towards sustainable growth across the energy value chain. Speaking after meeting with the NMPC Limited's group CEO, Mr. Boyer noted Total Energy's long-standing presence in Nigeria an impressive track record on critical projects in partnership with NMPC Limited. We have uh, still have some projects uh, in our in our portfolio, and uh, we are clearly, uh, I mean, they are clearly identified, and we are clearly working with uh, with NMPC to uh, to make them uh, live. So uh, so uh, there are a lot of engagement, a lot of energy, a lot of motivation from the teams from both sides. I think to to bring them to life. So uh, this is a uh, this is the plan today, both in oil uh, and in gas. Actually, NMPC Limited continues to reiterate its commitment to innovative collaborations in areas of capacity building, infrastructure, sustainable energy access, and associated programs capable of guaranteeing national energy security for sustainable growth across board. Time for a break, but when we return, Energy and you find out how much Nigerians know about the provisions of the Petroleum Industry Act and its advantages to Nigeria's energy industry. Stay with us. <laughs> what do we do at NNPC? Since inception as the National Oil Company of Nigeria, our mandate has been to serve the nation and meeting the energy needs of over 200 million people. Over the years, we have invested in tomorrow's leaders and contributed to the development of communities across the nation. We have grown a network of over 500 service stations. We are the driving force behind the constantly growing Nigerian economy. With an efficient distribution network servicing all parts of the country, we ensure the highest quality standards in our crude refining processes. Nigeria boasts of immense oil and gas reserves which we explore in commercial quantities, providing endless opportunities for economic development. As we drilled for oil, we discovered vast amounts of gas, up to 200 trillion scope. By harnessing gas, we have reduced gas flaring and invested in liquefaction plants, shipping gas across the globe. Our energy footprint is remarkable. We supply gas to the domestic market for power generation, reaching all across Nigeria. Powering everything, anywhere, and everywhere. NNPC, energy for today, energy for tomorrow. 
Welcome back to the program. The passage of the Petroleum Industry Act in 2021 marked a new era in the oil and gas sector as operations and exploitation activities are now governed by the provisions of the new law. The PIA has created a new governance structure and innovations that will impact the private and public sector as well as stakeholders in the oil and gas industry and further shape the new NNPC Limited. It also established the progressive fiscal framework that encourages further investments in the petroleum industry and a commercially oriented and profit driven NNPC Limited. Let's find out how much Nigerians know about this act and its impact on the energy sector. First of all, I would want to acknowledge the fact that it has led to the creation of the NMPC Limited and um, repositioning the company to be more profit driven and to compete with its um, contemporaries globally and that will translate to improved revenue for Nigeria. Um, it has sanitized greatly the sector, um, it has resulted to the elimination of oil subsidy and then of course uh, coming down to the grassroots it has resulted to the creation of the whole community um, trust fund and uh, with that we can have a rest from agitations as to resource um, allocations and resource benefit sharing um, to people in the communities and then companies can of course operate with ease and more stability and that translates to greater revenue for the country. There are lots um, of provisions in the Petroleum Industry Act of 2021 um, one of such is the provision of 3% um, um, oil companies operating tax for host community, 30% um, for um, um, inland basin exploration, um, particularly within the northern region and other parts of the country. Um, um, it also commercialized um, the NNPC. It created two new um, regulatory arm, um, the mainstream downstream petroleum regulatory authority, um, and the Nigerian um, Upstream Petroleum um, Regulatory Commission. Yes, and a, a whole lot of other provisions. It is a very, very good thing that the PIA has created a great impact and has brought stability to the uh, oil and gas industry and has created a platform for host communities. And this is a very, very good thing. NNPC Limited, through its subsidiary NNPC Foundation Limited, has partnered with the National Youth Service Corps and Kodimata Nigeria Limited to hold the first series of its Transforming Nigerian Youth Program. The event, which held at the NYSC camp in Abuja, had an attendance facilitators along with the 2023 Batch B Stream 2 core members. Take a look. The program is geared towards promoting economic empowerment of youths in the country through the NMPC Foundation Skills Acquisition and Entrepreneurship Development Initiative. In her remarks, the Managing Director, NMPC Foundation, Mrs. Emanuela Arukwe, highlighted the importance of the program in addressing the issue of youth unemployment in the country. She stated that the program is aimed at supporting Nigerian youths with startup kits for financial literacy. It's designed to give you so much information and keep you thinking and open that thinking cap in you to think, what can I do to really take advantage of every opportunity? It's a financial literacy program. There are things we all, have, all assume that we are financially literate, but I can tell you, you can see that by the basic things you have in your hands, you can do so much. You can tell you how to do even as small as Isusu is and things you can do to be financially literate and begin to create wealth. Even as you're just coppers today, you can start today, you can start now. Your future starts now. Participating in the program, the director of NYSE Skills Acquisition and Entrepreneurship Development, Said, Mrs. Ungozi Unwalarali, also highlighted the numerous benefits that the collaboration with NMPC Limited will provide for the youths. She stated that the program will bolster the youth's self-confidence enable their strategic positioning and resilience that will ultimately boost the nation's economy. Opportunities for youth empowerment available to skill acquisition and entrepreneurship development program are unassailable. We therefore call on all core members to take advantage of the opportunities Said provides to develop themselves, to be self-reliant 
and wealth creators. NYSE management will continue to solicit power support of more stakeholders to galvanize resources and to develop a culture of self-reliance in our youth for sustainable wealth creation and national development. Discussions at the program were centered around acquiring skills on budgeting, savings, investment and borrowing. Core members who participated in the event shared their thoughts and excitement. Two major things I loved from her section was when she talked about first budgeting because especially we young, we young um, core members, we are, we are going out getting jobs and then we are going to start making money for ourselves. But then if you are not able to manage that money uh, um, effectively, it's going to tell on us and we are going to run into debt. So what she mentioned was very important about budgeting, also based on your income. So there's no has, um, fast route to it, there's no one plus one, it's just based on your income, know how to budget, live within your means and that even brings me up to the next subject matter she talked about which is borrowing. Before borrowing, ask yourself, is this something you can do without you really need to borrow at this point because if you keep borrowing you're going to run into debt so it's very important that you prioritize your needs and prioritize your wants. Literally uh, social media influencer but today third lecture tells me how to make money on social media so now I feel like going back out of camp I will create a space to get more audience and make money on social media. I learned that I need to invest money and before I invest my money I need to do my budgeting and after doing budgeting, I need to think on which type of business I am going to start with it. The objective of this strategic initiative of the NMPC Foundation is a demonstration of the company's drive to create and deliver value in its core and non-core energy business operations. much we can take on the show today. If you missed any of the previous episodes, you can catch up by scanning the QR code on your screen now. You can also visit us on all our social media handles showing on your screen to stay updated with other activities of NNPC Limited. Please join us again next time. I'm Elgosa Digumbo. Bye for now.